Greetings! In today's video, I'm very happy to present the first part of a two-parts review, focusing on the portable painter palette. This first part will be more about using this palette indoors, as it's currently full-on winter in Canada, and I'd rather not lose a finger to frostbite. I'll do part two when the weather is nicer, so next spring or summer. This compact palette is relatively new to the market, but you might have seen more videos about it here on YouTube. It was created and designed by Steve Padden, an artist and industrial designer by trade. He made the portable painter based upon his experience of plein air painting with watercolors. It's my first time seeing this palette in person. I believe this is the latest model with a few additions based on customer feedback. It presents itself as a small box with a metal clasp and a silicone band. The clasp slides off and can then be held with the silicone band to one of the two compartments that make the outer shell of this palette. These two compartments will form the legs of the palette and double as water containers and brush rests. The white inner part is the palette itself, with its two foldable mixing trays. These click nicely into place when opened. There's a special synthetic double brush where a smaller point can be stored inside the body of the larger point. The palette has room for 12 colors and a lot of mixing space. The half pans are held in place really well by adhesive discs or dots. I had to leverage the screwdriver of my Swiss knife in there to pop a pan out. Overall, the palette is really easy to put together and doesn't require a lot of strength. I wanted to take a moment to address the pans. These half pans are custom made to fit in the palette and as such, there aren't a lot of commercially available pans that can replace them. Schminke, Sennelier and Generic half pans are either too big or too high to fit well in this palette. Winsor and Newton half pans, however, fit perfectly. It's also worth noting that an extra accessories pack will soon be available on their website, including empty pans, adhesive discs, and more. I decided to put Da Vinci watercolors in my set, as I recently made the best of a big sale on these paints. I ended up with 13 tubes and there are 12 spots in the set, so I'll pour all 13 colors and decide after swatching which one I'll leave out. I can always switch things around and have the extra pan in place of another one. The colors I have are quinacridone red, alizarin gold, quinacridone gold, aralide yellow deep, nickel azo yellow, green gold, rose madder quinacridone, Cobalt Violet, Cobalt Violet Deep, Cerulean Blue, Manganese Blue, Cobalt Turquoise, and Leaf Green. After swatching the colors and testing some mixes, I decide to leave Leaf Green out of the set for the moment. Then, it was time to set it up and paint. So far, the only minor tweak I did to my palette is to add a blob of poster tack to a corner of the brush tray so that the brush will stay in place and not repeatedly smash its bristles when I'm out and about with this palette. Since I'm indoors for this one, I have a paint rag instead of paper towels, but I still use my regular water bottle that I use for plein air painting. This sketchbook is the one I'm using at the moment, a mixed media cotton paper book by Strathmore. As I set out to paint this sketch, I realized that the brush is not exactly suited to my usual preferences. The larger tip is still a bit smaller than what I'd really want and being synthetic, it doesn't hold a lot of water. Still, 
I decided to work with it for this painting. The double brush has a really nice point and works super well for fine details. The paint mixes bead on the mixing area, but that's an effect that will fade the more I use this palette. I messed up with the values on my demo painting and had to see if using white gouache could rescue it a bit. In the end, I wasn't too happy with it and I decided to redo the demo, but this time with a larger brush. I was curious to see if it made a real difference or if the first one was just a bad art kind of day. I also took a moment at the beginning of the second demo to see if other travel brushes would fit in the brush tray. The only one I have that fits in well is very similar in size to the one already included with the palette, so I'm not sure it would make a real difference to switch it out. For my painting, I chose to use a Da Vinci Kolinsky Sable Travel brush in size 6. This brush, being larger and made of natural hair, made it much easier to work smooth washes and transitions. While I'm not sure if my second test is better than the first one, I think it has prettier washes for the sky with less visible brush strokes. As a third and last small demo, I wanted to show how one can use this palette with water brushes. 
These are brushes that have a hollow plastic body that you can fill with water, and they are super practical for sketching outdoors, as you don't need to carry a water bottle to rinse your brush. You just squeeze water out of the tip on a piece of paper towel or a rag to clean it up. I just used the water compartments of the palette to store my tools while I sketched. It was much simpler to do this rather than having to go rummage in the pencil case every time I wanted to switch out a tool. The portable painter is really a super convenient palette that you can use in various ways. Your imagination is the limit. There are a lot of good things about this palette, and no bad things, just a few considerations. To me, the best is how super snug everything is. I love that it's a compact box that takes care of a lot of tools at once. It's well designed, well made, and offers a lot of options to adjust to terrain, circumstances, or tools. The few considerations I came across as I used this palette are as follow. The palette is made in a way that it's a bit more difficult to hold it in one hand and paint with the other. Even without the water compartments, there's no ring at the bottom to steady it. It's really more intended for painting while sitting, so it can rest across your hip or have it on a surface nearby. The good thing is, it doesn't have to be a superbly flat surface, as this palette can adjust to rougher terrain. Another thing to keep in mind is to have paper towels or rags with you at all times to clean up brushes, but also this palette once you're done. The color puddles in the mixing trays or leftover water drops in the water compartments risk ending up in your bag or pockets, which is not the best. I have yet to test this palette outside, but I can already say it's a good one and I recommend it. And I have two extra fun things to share. The first one is a discount code for 10% off if you decide to purchase a portable painter palette via their website. I'll put all the informations in the description box. The other fun news is that I have an extra palette to give away. To be entered in this giveaway, please comment on this video with your thoughts on this super practical palette and how you'd use it. Thumbs up and shares are optional, but much appreciated. I'll pick a winner on January 31st, 2018. Good luck and thanks for watching! Bye bye!